Hi folks, thanks for tuning into your regular Stacker Chats. Stacks is smart contracts for Bitcoin, and I'm joined by Mani Bali, Stacks founder, with your updates on the ecosystem. So the block recently published a report um, and it outlined the various Bitcoin layers that are out there. Um, and so what are some of your takeaways on essentially this um, Bitcoin builder ecosystem? Yeah, so I think the, the, the background for the report is that we were actually trying to collect certain metrics, um, trying to better understand what the landscape for builders in the Bitcoin ecosystem looks like. Uh, and couldn't really find any good resource. Uh, so at Trust Machines, you know, our, our mission is to grow the Bitcoin economy and, and build really successful Bitcoin applications. Obviously, we use Stacks uh, uh, for building our applications because that's kind of like the dominant smart contract layer. Uh, but we are trying to better understand like what other technologies are there in the Bitcoin ecosystem, what are, what are developers doing with it? And, and there wasn't like any good resources available. So we commissioned this report with the block. I think they did a great job uh, pulling this data. And it's the first kind of like really comprehensive study of Bitcoin layers. And I think there, there's some very, very nice like historical context that uh, back in the early days, there were a bunch of on-chain Bitcoin protocols. Uh, so it's like, a, it's like a, the first era of uh, people trying to build on Bitcoin. And most of these things were on-chain like uh, Counterparty, which started NFTs, or uh, Mastercoin, which renamed to OmniLayer, which started like stable coins like Tether, uh, and then Color Coins, which are kind of like you know new types of digital assets. Uh, and none of these things really uh, reached mass market and have kind of like frizzled out, mostly because of scalability limitations and functionality limitations at the Bitcoin layer. And now there, then there's a revival that starts to happen around 2018 or so where there are these separate Bitcoin layers. So there's consensus among developers that you can't kind of like build on chain on Bitcoin. Uh, so Lightning is a separate kind of like payments channel. It doesn't have a global, uh, global ledger. And then there are things like Stacks or RSK and, and so on. So I think it's a, it's a very, very interesting report. Uh, I, would, I would look at it as a first attempt because I think right now in the industry, most people don't understand the design trade-offs between these different choices. Uh, there aren't like even good metrics available. Like one thing that I'd love to see is some sort of a metrics driven website where anyone can come in and actually get a sense of like the number of developers or users on, on these different Bitcoin layers or even capital that is actually being used. And I think that would help a lot of people like better understand, hey, what's happening in, in the developer ecosystem. And I'm a big believer in a lot of these uh, technical solutions uh, in, in Bitcoin they can be complementary to, to each other. And we're all kind of like trying to grow the Bitcoin economy. So the more all of us can help each other, the, the, the better I think it is. Absolutely, thank you. Um, and so we've recently seen the BYDX team announce their shift um, over to the Cosmos blockchain. And so I'm curious, what does this shift uh, sort of indicate about the broader Web3 space? Yeah, I think we have, we have discussed um, a similar topic earlier that uh, I think this was before 2021 really started or, you know, the Q1 or Q2 of 2021, there was a lot of skeptics out there uh, for these newer L1s uh, or even Bitcoin layers that, you know, these things are never going to get any traction because Ethereum was the earliest and it's kind of like the most established and so on. And I've always been in the camp that, you know, there seems to be uh, this market is like bigger than I think any of us really imagine, and there is a room for a lot of different types of solutions uh, to to coexist, or even new things to come in and disrupt kind of like existing players. And that's 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 the the reason I believed in newer, better L ones to start taking away market share from Ethereum, which a lot of people were kind of like you know dismissing that, or even calling these chains like ghost towns and whatnot. And I think the rise of Solana and Avalanche kind of like disproved that like very, very clearly so to the extent that even within, within a few months, um, the narrative in the crypto industry like completely changed 
that that look you know these other chains can also get real developers real users and start taking market market share from from the dominant platforms and i actually hold a similar theory for bitcoin layers as well which i think we will we'll start to see it play out maybe in the next cycle because from a purely infrastructure perspective i don't think the the infrastructure was fully there last cycle like in terms of speed and, and some some of the other functionality that you that you really need and 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 the move of like a top ethereum application like like dydx to another chain kind of also signals that this landscape is like far from being figured out right now right like even app, app developers can decide that for whatever reason they want to move to another chain or, or deploy a different technology so i think a lot of the things are still going to play out in the coming years. And the biggest kind of like lesson is that it is very, very early, right? So if you think that some programming language uh, has traction right now, that might change. If you think some smart contract platform might have traction right now, that might change, right? Like obviously there are network effects. Like for example, I don't think Ethereum is gonna disappear over time and it, it, it adds certain value to the, to the overall industry, but this is more of a, uh, message to the builders that you know you should really treat everything as like this is very early and try to go there deeper like for example if you're looking at a programming language then why is a programming language better than the other or if you're looking at you know long-term success you should think about what is the long-term moat of the ecosystem that you're coming in because for example i for one am a very big believer in bitcoin as money and i think if bitcoin wins as money that everyone who's kind of like building around it uh, basically rides the wave with Bitcoin, right? And that's, that's a mode, that's a very strong mode because uh, another ecosystem or another blockchain would have a very hard time becoming money because I think that that's actually a much, much harder thing to do uh, than, than creating some sort of other asset, right? Like, like money is probably like the hardest thing you can, uh, you can create. So if Bitcoin has that, then that gives people a lot of incentives to try and come and build in the Bitcoin ecosystem, especially when it's, it's sort of like early, um, and there is a lot more opportunity available with potential kind of like you know long term success. So that's that's that, that's that to me uh, was the thing that kind of, kind of like stood out that you know how how early every everything still is in, in this industry. Yeah.